that there was a genocide against the Biafra people. Right. Right. The, the, who were trying, you know, the Igbo people who were trying to form an independent nation of Biafra. They wanted to be separate from the country that the British empire had imposed on us, which was this country of Nigeria, where they kind of just kind of took a bunch of independent nations who don't have anything to do with each other, don't even speak each other's language, don't relate. Many of them were even enemies and warring at the time, smushed them all together and drew these arbitrary lines around them mm-hmm. and called them countries and named those countries. Right. And then said, now y'all get along and do a country for us and be a, a union for us. And then go through, you know, contentious, bloody independence processes that never really yield any real independence. You're still part of a commonwealth afterwards. True. And you have the eternal meddling in your affairs and the eternal extraction of your resources and the eternal fomenting of divisiveness and infighting mm-hmm. in order to be able to control you. This is what an oppressor does, a colonizer does. Uh, this is, these are, you know, tactics and strategies of dominance. Right. We were subjected to that as a larger unit of Nigeria. And then when the Igbo people said, we want our own thing. Let's, let's go in and do that. Well, it so happened to be that the territory that this new country of Biafra was going to be in, included very, very rich oil reserves. Mm. And the British were not going to let go of that. Wow. And the people that they had put in power, you know, the, their puppet Nigerian governments weren't going to do that either because they needed it for the Nigerian project. Right. And Britain needed it for its own interests and uses. So Great Britain got directly involved in this civil war and in the war for independence, and decided that they would do everything to make sure 